Some more help for y'all. Welcome back to Street Scores. It's your boy Rico giving y'all a Redskins Draft Specialist Edition of Redskins Report. Draft rumors, expectation, prospects to watch, and more. Today's topic, Redskins Draft Guide. Let's get it. As of today, the Redskins so far have the 13th pick, 44, 109, 142, 163, 205, 231, and 241. I could definitely see the Redskins trying to trade away some picks and trade down to acquire more picks since we have so many holes to fill. Now, for the draft speculations and rumors, this is the meat of the whole video. First, Jay Gruden has said that, quote, there will be another running back in the building, unquote, by the time the draft is over and said it's a good possibility that the Redskins draft the running back early. He also specified that he wants a running back that could even run between the tackles and catch the ball. He used the word thumper at the combine, which would mean Darius Geis, Saquon Barkley if he impossibly failed to 13 and Nick Chubb. I'm leaning towards Chubb personally because he will definitely be available in the second round. Also, the Redskins have been rumored to like him. Geis won't be available in the second. For example, he just met with the Patriots a couple of weeks ago and they have three picks before we even have two so chubb is the more realistic answer i would say not the person i necessarily prefer talent wise meanwhile doug williams seems to love this year's running back class he also mentioned that he is concerned about our offensive tackle depth so there may be some effort to draft some tackles late in the draft or get some in free agency i have one suggestion i want us to take a risk on but i'm gonna wait to reveal that later in the video bruce allen said that he is comfortable with staying with the 13th pick but if there's a big run on quarterbacks he would also consider moving back to acquire more picks to get some top players that are sliding down in the draft he also said there's a chance we trade back if there are multiple players with the same draft board grade available which makes sense so if there are like five players that we really like that are available at 13, then why not trade back, acquire a couple of more picks, and get more than one of them? The Redskins have traded down to get Ryan Kerrigan in 2011, and we also traded down one spot to get Josh Doxson. Very possible for us to make that move in 2018. Gruden really likes the Monte Nicholson and DJ Swearinger pairing. He truly believes that Monte can be great. He said that Monte is as important to the defense as Jordan Reed is to the offense. And he has honestly shown the talent to be a premier defense safety with his range and athleticism so drafting a safety high seems unlikely unless there's somebody that wows them jay gruden also seems optimistic about the zach brown mason foster duo inside linebacker so the redskins may not see inside linebacker as a serious need in this draft jay gruden and the redskins feel the team has no major holes or needs so i as in Rico and Street Scores, I'm guessing that the Redskins will lean towards a best player available drafting strategy and will also not overpay in free agency for the remainder of free agency. Also, notable meetings wise, the Redskins have had private meetings with defensive lineman Vita Vea, running back Darius Geis, defensive tackle Deron Payne, wide receiver Anthony Miller, center Billy Price, and pass rusher Josh Sweat. Bruce Allen had a private dinner set up with LSU running back Darius Geis. Bruce, Doug Williams, and Clinton Portis were at Darius Geis' pro day also there's definitely a lot of interest in guys the Redskins also met with a lot of prospects at the senior bowl combines east west shrine games in private in visits and pro days most notably quarterback baker mayfield wide receiver dj moore running back rashad penny and offensive tackle cole madison bruce allen also visited running backs ronald jones pro day and the redskins interviewed him at the combine and the redskins hosted him very recently there seems to be a lot of interest in ronald jones also the redskins have also set up a visit with arden key who has all of the talent in the world but plays very inconsistently when he is at his best he is the best pass rusher in the class as a pure pass rusher not edge defender in total but pass rusher yes but he takes plays off and he kind of took a whole year off honestly <laughs> so i'm intrigued by how far he may fall in this draft we could use a junior galette replacement and plus he's from atlanta not even 20 minutes away from where i'm at so i'm super rooting for him and my secret is out y'all my boy jordan mylotta who i've been trying to keep a secret till my next mock draft has been found out he's not only appeared at the international pro day and impressed but he has also had a very recent visit with the Redskins and many other teams. Oh lord, man. Everybody knows now. He's a 21-year-old. Don't mind the screen. He just recently turned 21. 6'8", 345-pound rugby player from Australia that runs under a 5.040 time. That's insane. He will more than likely be used as an offensive tackle in the NFL, but he needs a lot of coaching. Offensive tackle is a very mechanical position in the NFL. It's one of the hardest positions to just come in and learn, especially at the NFL level. 
He's going to need some time and some coaching. May have to sit on the practice squad for a while until he is ready. But his potential is crazy. If somebody wanted to, they can make him into a 46 pound heavier, even faster version of Calais Campbell. So many possibilities. I want the Redskins to bring him in as an undrafted free agent and let Jim Tom Sula and Bill Callahan coach him up and see if he's better on D-line or an offensive tackle. Either way, I just want him on our team. See what he can do. He can do something. He has 36 inch arms. He has to do something. Mel Kuyper recently reported that if the Redskins don't give Vita Vea at the 13th pick, then the Skins could target BJ Hill at the 44th pick in the second round. One of the Red Helmet Gangsters. Shouts out to Vach Lombardi. Another reporter stated that the Redskins will draft Mika Fitzpatrick from Alabama if he somehow slides to the 13th pick. But it's also reported that they really like Derwin James and Vita Veo with that 13th pick. Doug Williams recently stated that the Redskins will not rule out a quarterback with the 13th overall pick even though we just got Alex Smith and Kevin Hogan. And I personally feel like it is just a strategy to boost the value of our 13th pick in case we intend to trade it away. If Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, or Baker Mayfield slide down to us, there may be a team willing to give us a combination of multiple first round and second round picks to move up, especially with teams in the quarterback market right behind us like Arizona at 15, Baltimore may be at 16, San Diego at 17, they need to replace Phillip Rivers soon, Cincy at 21, and Buffalo at 22. If one of those teams wants to improve its chances of getting a franchise quarterback, they could jump above the rest of them and trade up to our 13th pick. Chris Cooley has been noted of saying that he bets good money that the Redskins would take Deron Payne over Vita Vea in the draft. And that's a strong proclamation, and it's definitely noteworthy with him being so close to the organization. Also, DJ Swearinger and two of Deron Payne's ex-teammates at Alabama, Jonathan Allen and Ryan Anderson, have been pushing for the Redskins to draft Payne, so that's also noteworthy. Cooley has also said that the Redskins' ideal scenario is to trade down for Deron Payne and trade up for Geis. And if that is true, then I feel like trading the 13th pick to the Patriots for their 23rd and 31st picks in the first round would be the best option for us. We would probably ask for something more with it too, like maybe a third rounder to go along with it. Jay Gruden has a huge preference for running backs to protect the ball and out of the top backs in the draft ronald jones has the highest fumble rate which is a good thing i don't want it to sound like it's bad sadly sony michelle has the lowest by far which is really sad to me that's my georgia boy he even has a song with rich homie kwan and a mixtape and everything out i really want him on our team sony michelle's elite talent and potential may not be enough for jay gruden to take that risk though if jay gruden has seen these stats then ronald jones may be a lock in the second round and as i previously mentioned the redskins have met with him several times rich chandler stated that the redskins will want to carry 12 receivers in the otas but the redskins only have six so far on their roster so there may be quite a few draft picks spent on some or a few picked up in free agency signings or both and at the end of the day Vita Vea is still being mocked to us by professional mock drafters more than any other player and many of them have insider information and news and Vita has more upside than any other D lineman in this class due to his athleticism size pure strength and unexpected agility the only questions are if he can fully develop his pass rush ability and if he can be a three down player. But don't be surprised if the Redskins take him in the first round, especially with many scouts and media people thinking he should go before we even get a chance to get him. And Jim Tonsula, one of the best D-line coaches in the league, would love to have his hands on Vita Vea. Pretty sure he would get the most out of him possible. So me personally, my vote is Vita Vea over Deron Payne. Bruce Allen, Doug Williams, and Jay Gruden have all approved of the Redskins frugal free agency spending. Many Redskins fans are upset with this strategy i do not want us to overspend like we used to but i did want us to be more aggressive personally the rams made moves that make you go how do they even have that much cap space and the redskins could have made similar ones but hey one future positive of this strategy and which is why i'm bringing it up in my draft video and not my free agency video is that not only does it give us good cap space but these future compensatory picks that we are slated to get look really nice with the moves we have made so far in free agency allowing people to just leave the organization for free and some of them getting way bigger contracts than they should have we are currently expected to get four compensatory picks in the 2019 draft a third rounder a fifth rounder and two sixth rounders so we have 11 picks in the 2019 draft so far already i am definitely a fan of more draft capital mocks next year are going to be even more fun to play around with and oh lastly here's the official redskins draft hat I feel like the draft guide wouldn't be complete without this in it. If you're going to the draft, or at least going to be in the Dallas area, make sure y'all show out and wear all y'all red skin gear, and please be as loud and as obnoxious as possible for me. And make sure y'all tune into the draft Thursday through Sunday, 
April 26th through the 28th in enemy territory, Dallas, Texas, AT&T Stadium. The first round is on Thursday the 26th starting at 8 p.m. The second and third rounds are on Friday the 27th starting at 7 p.m. And rounds 4 through 7 start at noon on Saturday the 28th. I will be bringing y'all a draft review like I did last year's draft soon after the seven rounds are over and that's it for this draft related episode thanks for the view getting them comments and let us know who you feel the redskins should draft and why and while you at it make sure you dolomite fake punch that like button favorite subscribe i'll subscribe back and most importantly comment and share and again i'm bringing y'all a final mock soon and i'm also going to be bringing y'all a redskins draft review soon after the draft thank y'all for the support i'll catch y'all later i'm out